everybody and welcome to Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, and this is where I show you recipes from my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, that will help you achieve healthy, permanent, and sustainable weight loss. This is my new kitchen, so I hope to be bringing you many, many more recipes. This isn't actually a new recipe. This is a recipe I did on a previous episode of Weight Loss Wednesday. But accidentally, I redid an episode, I think it was episode 112 or 113, where I showed the lip smack and mouth watering kale. And people were so excited, and I got so many emails saying they not only appreciate the shorter format, but they'd like me to redo some of those recipes in the shorter format, because it's easier for them to look at and access. So I'm not gonna do that with all the recipes, but I wanted to redo this recipe because it really is probably my favorite soup recipe of any soup recipe that I've created. And I really love soup and I do love my soup recipes because sometimes the smallest tweak can make the biggest difference in this recipe. So what I do is I'm making the cauliflower bisque. Now it's on page 201 of my book. I'm gonna give you all the ingredients, so don't worry. But it's in an end note. And the reason is, is I created this recipe after the book was just about to be published and my co-writer was like, no, I'm not making any more changes. And I understand that because that, it would have been a lot of work but it's so good I really want it featured. And so I'm gonna feature it in this recipe. So it's called cauliflower bisque, and really it's a variation. It started with Mary McDougall, who creates thousands of delicious starch-based healthy recipes, and most of them are free on the McDougall website, and you can get the McDougall app. She had a recipe called broccoli bisque that is fantastic, and I have my own variation in this book. So if you just follow Mary McDougall's recipe for broccoli bisque and just swap out any vegetable or any potato, you're gonna have a delicious soup because this soup never doesn't work. The only way I changed Mary's recipe was I added a few things. One of the things I added was I added some nutritional yeast, which is totally optional. And then the other thing I added was just a little bit more spice. I like things a little bit more spicy. Not that her soup isn't plenty flavorful, it is. But you're gonna see what spices I added because they're spices I really like. And Plus, since I'm doing salt-free cooking, I feel it really needs that level of je ne sais quoi to make it really palatable. And it's very possible in her recipe she was using a vegetable broth, which may have had salt, which would make it very delicious also. So this particular variation goes so well together. And if you live in a place that you cannot get the Jersey yams or the Hanny yams or the white sweet potatoes, I don't know what to tell you because... The orange ones, guys, just don't do it for me. I like the orange sweet potatoes if they're made into fries, and I like them if they're made into butterscotch pudding, which is a previous recipe on Weight Loss Wednesday. But for eating and for soups, they're just too mushy. They just, bleh, I don't like them. I'm sorry. If you like them, use them. But also, I just, this, the colors, I just love the color in this one. So cauliflower bisque, what would cauliflower bisque be without cauliflower? So I just get a big old pan of organic cauliflower, and I use everything. Yes, you can use the green. You know, once I had dinner with Dr. Greger at Dr. Baxter Montgomery's house, and he was eating fruit. And when he ate the strawberry, he ate the stem. And when he ate the kiwi, he ate the peel. And except for certain things like, you know, banana peels, which actually you can eat if you cook them, everything is good. This, this green part is delicious. I wish it was a vegetable of its own. So I just buy the biggest head that I can find. And I've used the purple and the orange to try to get it a different color. It didn't work. So I just get the biggest head I can find. And if you don't want to use it by the head, just use two pounds of cauliflower, like if you're going to use the florette. So I'm just going to put it in the Instant Pot. I'm using the eight quart because otherwise this recipe won't fit. I've got six cups of water already in the Instant Pot, which you can heat up in advance if you want it to go quicker. Two pounds of Hannah Yams. Every store I go to has a scale, so I just find what weighs two pounds. And then an entire onion, and I'm just putting everything in whole. And if you want to come in a little bit closer just to see, I'm putting everything in whole. Now this is kind of not clearing the top, so I, I really don't like to go to the effort to cut anything, but just to make it fit a little bit better, I'm gonna cut the onion. And I am using a sweet white onion. You know, normally I do use a lot of red onion in my recipes, but for this soup, if you just follow this one exactly, I tell you, it will knock your socks off. I serve this to company, I serve this to regular people, this is my husband's favorite, but you gotta use what I say. A white cauliflower, Hannah or Jersey yams or white sweet potatoes, and a sweet onion. Not a yellow and not a white one. Go to the trouble of really getting all all the ingredients you need before the recipe if you really want it to taste extra delicious. I don't measure garlic and I just get the packs like this at Trader Joe's and I just put one in. I feel like if a little garlic's good, more is going to be better, especially if you're doing salt-free cooking. It's really hard to make things taste good, in my opinion, without onion and garlic in general, but for salt-free cooking specifically. 
and then we have the spices. I know you think I'm kidding, but I really do do this. Anytime a spice jar is empty, I wash it, I put a piece of tape on it, it's kind of wearing off, but it says cauliflower, because I know I'm gonna make this every week, so why take the time of measuring all my spices every time? But even with the tape on it, I still smell it. Yep, to make, <laughs> to make sure that's right. And then I put it in. And what these spices are, two tablespoons of dill weed right here. We've got two tablespoons of Benson's Table Tasty. So far, that's the best salt-free seasoning that I have found that tastes like salt. Debbie Benson has a couple of new flavors coming out. So I'm using the roasted garlic. You guys can't get that yet, but if you come to the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in Vegas, she'll have the new flavor, the roasted garlic, which is, believe it or not, even better than this. And she'll have the chipotle smoked paprika, which is as good as this. This will knock your socks off. If you, love, if you like this, you will love this. So two tablespoons of either or one in one is fine. And then I'm using smoked paprika. Don't skimp on spices, please, especially if you're doing salt-free cooking. They don't last forever. I remember when my mom passed away, we had a jar of Coleman's mustard that was there since I was born. She didn't throw anything out. They don't last forever. It's not like they'll hurt you if they're old. They just lose their potency and their flavor. So I don't mind spending extra money on really good spices. I love Penzies. I love savory. If you can get to one of those or buy online, they have a great smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is completely different than Hungarian or sweet paprika, which is also good. But again, for salt-free cooking, you want that smoky flavor. And that is an addition, that is uh, something that was added to this recipe. When I was teaching this recipe at Rancho La Puerta in Mexico, the student that was making it just th thought the soup was flat because they're not used to eating salt. And I said, well, what would you do to make it better? And she thought of smoked paprika. So then I added the one tablespoon of smoked paprika. Another really good brand, uh, Sabrina Nelson from Veg Source turned me on to this one. You can get on Amazon is the bourbon smoked paprika. And the McCormick from Costco is good too. I mean, just make sure it's smoked. But here's the thing I added since I did this episode a while back. It makes a difference and it's not enough to make it spicy, but one half teaspoon of chipotle powder. Penzi's has got a really good one. Chipotle is basically a smoked jalapeno and this Frontier brand is really good. I'm gonna write this out in the show notes, follow this exactly, and I promise you it's gonna knock your socks off. There are some things we're gonna add afterwards, the nutritional yeast, the non-dairy milk, the nutritional yeast being optional, of course, and the salt-free mustard. But for now, we need to cook this. Again, if you don't have an Instant Pot, get the eight quart. If you don't have the eight quart, get the eight quart. It's the best for my recipes. You don't wanna be cooking every day. Make a big batch. Eat some, freeze some. Put it at 11 o'clock. Make sure that you're sealing it. And then you push the manual button. That's the easiest way. 12 minutes should be enough. If I were so lazy and if I cut the potato up, probably I could get this done in 10 minutes. And if I heat the water up in advance, it would get done much quickly, much more quickly. And that beep just means, is this what you want, lady? Yep. So we'll let it come up to pressure and then I'll tell you how to finish the soup. What I love about the Instant Pot is you literally set it and forget it and it doesn't matter how long you let it go. I mean, if it's zucchini or broccoli, you wouldn't want to let it go for hours, but for soups, stews, chilies, it shuts itself off of the pressure setting and it becomes like a crock pot. And the pressure has already been released. And now all my vegetables are soft. The potatoes are soft, the onions, the cauliflower. And so what I'm gonna do is add the remaining ingredients. This tablespoons, four tablespoons of nutritional yeast, totally optional. Some people don't like it, can't have it. You don't need it, but if you do use it, make sure you get a good unfortified bread. And then we're gonna add our mustard. I'm using the salt-free West Spray. You can get it on Amazon. If you have Prime, I get it delivered the same day. Many health food stores have it. Four tablespoons. You can get it on Thrive Market and Vitacost. Very good mustard. I see it at Sprouts. Four tablespoons of that. And then the non-dairy milk. Three to four cups, depending on how thick you want it. I'm gonna do four cups. I'm using a brand called Elmhurst. It's just nuts and water. I prefer to use a clean brand without salt, without any of the carrageenan and all that kind of stuff, but make your own, it's cheaper. I showed you how in two previous episodes of The Chef and the Dietitian, I believe it was episode 10 was one of them. And it's very easy to make your own just from a couple tablespoons of almond butter or from a cup of soaked nuts. Get a stick blender, you can get these at Costco, Bed Bath & Beyond, very inexpensive, and you stick it all the way to the bottom, 
So we're not. And those are that whole head of cauliflower. Boom. It smells so good. love to serve this over brown rice. Throw in some greens like arugula. I don't have any right now. Oh, you could also use a blender, but it's so much safer to do this. So again, the rice is behind me. You can't see it, but it's there. I did cook some organic Texmati rice. This only gets better as it ages. I love to throw in some greens. I love to garnish it with a little bit of chopped red onion, which I don't have right now. You can always sprinkle a little bit of that smoked paprika over the top. And if you want a little bit of dill over the top. And there you have it, Chef AJ's favorite, favorite soup, cauliflower bisque. I can't wait to go back to Rancho La Puerta and make this again. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy taste delicious so you can have both the health and the body you so richly deserve. Bye now.